a clown at school. Always acting deaf. Out to 34 pupils in our class. I think me and my mate were, were 33 and 34. We were terrible. There are seven wonders in the world. There's a club called the Ryan Hall. I was playing darts in there when I was about 11 years old, and an old fella, he asked me my name. I said, it oh, Phil Taylor, like. And he says, you'll be the best player in the world one day, you will. I am now going to introduce you to the eighth and wonder of the world. He's a good lad. In my eyes. My job biased of his mother all the time. When he's here, he's Phil. When he's on stage, he's like a different person. Phil Taylor's become a darts legend, world number one and now a wealthy man. But there's not too much flash about him. The trappings of fame and fortune are kept very much at arm's length as he stays true to his roots in the potteries. We don't live a lavish lifestyle. We don't want a lavish lifestyle. We just want a normal life. And that's why we don't move, we don't go anywhere. I've got great neighbours, couldn't wish for better neighbours. Do you enjoy it? Do you enjoy being famous? I think more than ever. I'm used to it now, but I haven't got that fame where I get a hassle. You know what I mean? I get a nice, nice fame, if you know what I mean. People ask me for autographs and have a chat with you, you know, ask you when your next tournament is. I don't get any, any hassle at all. I remember Eric, Eric used to get hassle. Terrible, terrible hassle. And, and, and Jockey did as well. But I've been very lucky. Eric always said to me, don't do what I did, because it's not that good of a life. So I always try to keep myself, you know, as the general, lap, you know, normal life. Champion of the world! Darts has become big business. Sellout crowds jam the venues for the events that are an intoxicating mixture of sporting brilliance and sheer unadulterated hype. It's all a far cry from the world of Phil's youth. That's my that was my old house there. This one here with the canopy, 54. This was uh, this was a council house, obviously when when we first yeah. first moved up here. And I believe it's not the gate. What's in the middle? I made about 30 years ago with some old plank. I can remember the double glazing when the council first put it in. Got up one morning, Saturday morning, my dad sitting right by the window there. And somebody had taken the window out. The big pane in the middle. And my dad sitting there said, I thought it was breezy. So the window's <laughs> on the lawn, the window was on the lawn. <laughs> in 2007, the sports returned to ITV with a new competition the grand slam of darts, and Taylor made it through to the final. Perfect lie, that, for Taylor. We're going to get another one. One! You just knew. Four apiece. Because I lived here from when I was about four years old till I was about 22, so probably 18 years I would lived here. The little trellising. Believe it or not, I used to climb up there. <laughs> when I was a kid, I mean, they'd fall to pieces now. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't try it now, would you? Climb on the wall and then jump onto that roof there. Yeah, some memories here, John. Mm. Yeah, 83, trouble 17, double 16. Double 16 for a 143 to go further ahead at 85. Yes, yes fantastic yes. finish by Taylor. Taylor. Unbelievable. Has that view changed a lot over the years? No, not at all, except there used to be factories there. And I'll tell you what we did once. Big oil drums, empty ones. We lit a fire down there and we put the old drum on it. Right. If my mate's dead, he could hear this slight interest. Right, come on. We've got to about here and hear this bang. I mean, from here, it must have gone 100 foot in the air. This one gets Oh, God. It was in the papers. It got, it was in the papers and everything. A bomb had gone off. <laughs> That's one in the treble. That's two of them. Wow. Seventh, 180. Ah, no ball games. <laughs> That'd have been gone when I were here. Is this where you used to play? Yeah. This was our goalpost here. Dart Avenue. Dart Avenue, that's the one. But this was our goalpost. So when you were out there, you chuck the ball to your mate like that, and if you missed the ball, you had to leg it quick, get down there, go fetch it. Because <laughs> it used to go right around the heart. You got oh. about half a mile down there. Hello. <laughs> it's all right getting down, it's coming back up again, it's a problem. 
Double top. There it is! Phil Taylor has taken the Grand Slam of Darts. Taylor's form in Wolverhampton was just breathtaking after a year when some had begun to wonder if his era of dominance was drawing to an end. But it demonstrated emphatically that the 13-time world champion has got more to offer yet. And this Grand Slam of Darts victory was just another small chapter in the story of the greatest player of all time. My mum and dad never had any money, you know, always, always struggling for money. Same as any family was then. My dad's wages only lasted till Thursday. So me and my mother used to go collect copper wire and wait in and burn it off and whatnot. Wait in, ready for the Friday, Friday's food money. I was a cheeky little bugger, like. If you can see buggy. <laughs> There's one of the old bottle ovens there on the left side. Yeah. In there. The old kilns. This was Johnson's tiles here, this one. That's where my father worked for 30 years. Johnson's? Yeah. Mother used to work in a small pot bank here years ago. Can you remember the first time you ever picked up a dart? Be when I was a kid. My mother will tell you better now, I will, but maybe five or six years old probably. Um, I only played for fun. I'm on one of them paper dart boards them days. My dad had the brass darts and whatnot. But my dad always went to the pub, see. That was his that was his era. You know, loved going out. Didn't like stopping in my dad. But there's there's a club called the Ryan Hall. And and why why it springs to my mind is, is is Robbie Williams started there. He sang there when he was a kid. And I was playing darts in there when I was about eleven year old and an old fella and he asked me my name and I said oh, Phil Taylor like and he says you'll be the best player in the world one day you will like yeah right you know never even took dart serious then but i can know i can remember it to this day i mean it'd be long gone now but it was spooky the way he did it and the f funny enough I, I was at rob's of the week and, and i said you know me and you started in the same place you know our careers really that's this right all there oh here we go that's Chris. where I, that fella said to you me and robbie williams used to sing in there believe it or not well, this was a pub here well that was rob's here with these brown the gray gates there that was where robbie lived with his mom jan I'll tell you a little story. He come back with his dad from golf. There was all girls outside, and he told his dad drive past. And they parked round the corner here, Norman Avenue. And he'd had two songs what had, what had like flopped. And he says, "Dad, I've got a song." He says, "And if he doesn't make it, I've, I've had it." And he sat in the street here. He's telling me the other day, and that's where he uh, sang the song to his dad. His dad said it was brilliant. It was called Angels. The perfect first, first one. Right. Not wrong with the second one either. Oh, Rihanna, the back clue. The work of a maestro. I can remember going um, down to a club and, and watching my dad play. Their team was a, a, a pub called the Riley Arms, and they were the best team in the league. They used to win everything. The cup, the merits, you know, you did the team game. And I can remember playing them after when I was young and, and saying to my dad, how come you lot keep winning everything? I said, you're rubbish, you know. <laughs> Sure up you. Well, that would have been the Riley Arms there. Uh, Which one? Here. Where this. the co-op is? Yeah, that was the Riley Arms. This was the, the team to beat the Riley Arms when I was a kid. As you walked in, the dartboard was on your left-hand side, so you say, put us a P up, because you'd be... be a